Greetings my beautiful lovelies, it's Emmy. Welcome back. Today I'm going to be making a recipe that I stumbled upon in an interesting stream of events. It began with a trip to the thrift store, which I love to do. I love hunting for treasures. And I found this book. It's the Betty Crocker's Cookbook for Boys and Girls. Why it doesn't just say cookbook for kids, I don't know, but it's for both boys and girls. So this cookbook was $1.99 and the pages are kind of falling out so let's fix that shall we okay book yeah okay this is first published in 1975 but this edition is from the 80s from 1982. so this cookbook includes recipes that are designed for children to make so here's the cook's corner here are the supplies you will need to make these recipes it even tells you how to measure out ingredients correctly. I've noticed a lot of the recipes involve doing things like this, creating foods that have faces, that look like things like a football or that monstrosity, oh no. a crater ham loaf. I mean, that does not sound appetizing, no matter how you shape it. Pear pooch, yes. So I could see that that this is trying to make food more appealing and cooking more appealing for kids because it's making it fun. But let me get to how I got to today's recipe. So on this page, there's a recipe for eggs in bologna cups. And I said, is that a thing? Are bologna cups, like egg bologna cups a thing? So I went, of course, to the internet and looked it up. And then I found a recipe that I knew I had to make. And it's done by Maddie Matheson who, if you don't know who he is, he's a larger than life character, Canadian chef that is energetic and funny. And he has this recipe for a bologna bowl. It was actually his wife's recipe. She introduced him to the bologna bowl and it's super simple. It's a bowl made out of bologna that contains an egg. Their recipe contains a slice of American cheese as well. Very similar to this recipe, except you have more bologna and the bowl is sort of freestanding. So if you've ever cooked bologna or pepperoni before, you've noticed that when you apply heat to it, it kind of cups up. So that's what happens here. We're gonna use three slices of bologna. We're going to use microwaves. And then as it cooks, the skin of the bologna is going to contract and then bind it and kind of shrink it up into a bowl. And then we have an egg inside it and cheese. It's like the perfect breakfast. It sounds absolutely delicious. So here I am to make it. But first I should really get into Maddie zone. That's better, don't you think? That's better. All right, let's do this. So this is gonna be pretty simple. All we need is a bowl and our ingredients. Boop, 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 boop. American cheese, which apparently they have in Canada too. Bologna, nothing fancy, plain old bologna. And some eggs. So you can make this with as many eggs as you like. I typically have one egg, so I'm gonna make mine with one egg. But yes, I'm sure you could use two or even three if you like. So this recipe was introduced to Maddie by his girlfriend, his now wife. They are high school sweethearts. I love that. And another thing I like about this recipe is that anybody could do this. If you've got microwave, you can do this. Children can do this. Make yourself a little quick snack, breakfast. Here you go, right in a bowl. So I think the last time I had bologna was when I made my bologna cake, which if you haven't seen, I'll put the link down below to that. But that was the last time I remember eating bologna. But I've always appreciated this packaging. Nothing has changed here. We just pull this back up and there we get our meat. Now, bologna, I believe, has its origins from Italy, from Bologna, and it's a cousin to mortadella, which is the Italian version of bologna, but it has big pieces of fat in it. Absolutely delicious. And this is bologna. I remember going to my neighbor's house and we would take bologna like this and we would make bologna snowflakes or bologna faces. I mean, come on. Apply this as a face mask. Okay, just kidding. Let's see if I can get a smile out of it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Bologna face emoji. Man, I haven't tasted bologna in a long time and it's good and familiar in that way. It has a very specific flavor, kind of porky, processed, 
tastes a little bit like Vienna sausages. It has a nice little bounce to it. And there's like a little kind of like nutmeggy spice or something in it, but yeah, bologna, bologna mustard sandwiches. All right, so enough reminiscing about bologna. Let's build this. So in a bowl, Maddie actually loves this recipe so much, he included it in his cookbook, which came out a couple years ago. I didn't even know that, so I requested it from my library, so I should be getting it soon. But yes, bologna bowl in your cookbook, love that. So we're gonna take three slices of bologna and we're gonna just layer them like this. Little trilogy. Next, we're gonna add a slice of cheese. Right in the middle of that. This is some geometry here. And then we put the lid back on the bologna container. Right, we store it like that. <sighs> Memories. Okay, what's the thing with the Barbara Streisand lately? I, I don't even own any Barbara Streisands and now I'm singing Cats. I don't know, I don't know, okay, egg. These are one of the eggs that actually came from my chickens. My chickens have been laying very infrequently, but we usually get about one egg or two eggs every other day. So, homegrown egg. Right in the middle, we've got ourselves an egg. That is an unfertile egg, but that looks something embryonic, but you know, I'm going with it. Now we just place this in the microwave for 30 seconds, 45 seconds, depending on how cooked you liked your eggs. I like my yolks to be runny so I can, you know, stick my toast in it. So I'm gonna try 30 seconds and see how that goes. Okay, here we go. Mm -hmm. Introduce you to my microwave. Beep, beep, beep. Nah. Maddie, you proud of me? I don't have any boogers to like <laughs> swallow though. I do have a few. Not in sufficient quantity to actually have them go down my throat, but I hear some sizzling and crackling. I like that. That's some activity. Oh, beep, beep, beep. No. 30 more seconds. So now that we're talking about eggs in microwaves, it reminds me of when my dad used to make eggs for my brother in the microwave. He had this little red bowl, plastic. He would put the egg in there, nuke it. Mm-hmm. No. Now we're at one minute, 30 seconds. When I was looking this recipe up, I noticed that it was featured in Esquire and it said 30 to 45 seconds. But in the video I saw of Maddie making this, he said, I thought like three minutes, but that seemed overly long. So, so you're gonna just have to find the sweet spot in your microwave because you know, microwaves are different. Plus you may like your eggs differently too. Okay, one minute, 30 seconds. Nope. Ooh, but the bowl is starting to happen. Yes. Two minutes. It's a great sound, that crackling of fat. What's not so great is the cleanup. You're like, oh no. The worst offender for microwave cleanup, spaghetti. Spaghetti and meatballs, spa Okay, that's two minutes. Mm -hmm. nope. So I think my notes were right. So I actually watched this in a video that Maddie did and I wrote three minutes. And then when I was looking up the recipe, it said 30 to 45 seconds. I'm like, what was I thinking? I must have heard incorrectly, but I think three minutes is right because we're going on three minutes right now. Bologna also reminds me of Taylor Pork Roll. If you've never heard of Taylor Pork Roll, it's a New Jersey thing. I did a breakfast sandwich about it. I'll put the link down below to that. But that is a very hyper-regional deli meat that is used and sliced with bagels and eggs and cheese and Sometimes not necessarily a bagel, but sometimes a Kaiser roll, and it's delicious, but it's hyper regional. And it reminds me a little bit of bologna, although I'm sure New Jerseyans are, are gonna tell me otherwise. Okay, three minutes. Oh, that's looking fine. Isn't that gorgeous? Look at that. The three slices of bologna have curled up on the edges and crisped up beautifully in the microwave. 
The egg is beautifully cooked. The cheese is melted. Although I think my egg might be a little bit overcooked now that I touch it, it's a little bit firm. But this is my first bologna bowl. I can always make adjustments with the cooking time. So this was about three minutes. So maybe two and a half minutes the next time. Butter my toast. Alrighty, so Maddie suggests cutting the toast into little soldiers. Fine recommendation, I think. Where's my homemade hot sauce? Here we go. I'm gonna finish this with a bit of black pepper. Oh, cut open. Yes, a little bit more cooked than I would like. Toast. Ah, itadakimasu. <laughs> Delicious, breakfast of champions. I'm gonna get this piece right here where the bologna's gotten nice and toasted. And I've got some American cheese in there, which kind of acts like a nacho cheese, melty glue that's savory and adds this really great, rich mouthfeel. You've got eggs and meat together, and that is quintessential breakfast to me. You've got crispy toast. Now I'm gonna have a bite with the crispy bologna. Mm -hmm. The texture of the bologna is really great when you cook it that way. It gets simultaneously kind of crunchy and firm and dried out, but it concentrates that flavor of the bologna and gives it that kind of toasted hot dog flavor <laughs> that I just love. Something about this is very nostalgic, even though I've never had this dish before. The combination of flavors of that cheese, I think in particular, and the bologna just kind of take you back from when you were a little kid. I'm gonna grow it up a little bit by putting some hot sauce. This is my homemade hot sauce. I will put a link down below if you wanna see how to make your own delicious, beautiful hot sauce at home by fermenting chili peppers. The best, the best. I found that I actually like it more like a paste rather than a sauce. I like the thicker consistency and kind of more intense heat. Here we go. Mmm, that little bit of heat and acidity, garlic, goes so well with the bologna and of eggs, of course. I have this on my eggs all the time. I actually put this on everything. Love it so much. Mm -hmm. There's something about bologna. I think it's the color. Well, it's a combination of things. It's the color, it's the texture, it's the gloss of it that make it seem, you know, triple X. Just like, oh, bologna. Whoo, shouldn't be looking at that. <laughs> Alrighty, my beautiful lovelies. Thank you so much for joining me. I hope you guys enjoyed that one. I hope you guys learned something. Please share this video with your friends. Follow me on social media. Like this video. Subscribe. And I shall see you in the next one. Lou, take care. Bye. <laughs>